Hello, my name's Gabriel Baker and I'm going to read you a story called Duke the Wonder Horse. This book is dedicated to all the children who love to read, enjoy using their imagination and their love of animals. Here we start. Hello, my name is Duke and I'm a Clydesdale horse. I was born in the spring on a horse farm in Wangaratta in Victoria, Australia. When I was born, my, my birth mummy loved me. She told me to drink her milk. It would make me strong and I did get strong. I did a lot of sleeping with my mummy nearby, casually grazing on the grass. I soon found that there were other foals born just like me. So they became my friends and we ran around and frolicked, jumped and kicked. We played games in the fresh air and the warm sun. At the end of the day, mum would call me and we would settle down for the night. I felt warm, loved, relaxed and above all, wanted. The humans seemed to make me their favourite. They chuckled every time I wagged my tail. I would walk up to them with my mummy and she would get a treat. I was a few months old and one day this man came to the property. The owner put a halter on me and a rope and I was led into the round yard. Here I was gilded and branded. Oh, when I woke up, oh, it was so painful. It hurt, it was a horrible experience. I learnt not to trust the humans, they were awful. When I was free, I ran up to my mummy and I told her what had happened. She said, I know, it had to happen. It happens to all the male young horses. I said, but why mummy, why? And mum said to me, because one day you'll be put up for sale. And I said, mummy, why can't I just stay here with you? I'll be no trouble, I'll be good. Mum said, the, only, the owner only wants fillies, not colts. My mind wandered off and I forgot that conversation I had with mum. I spent a number of months grazing on the grass and growing big and strong. I was regularly being groomed. That was always nice. It was like having a massage and I got rid of all the itches. Having my hooves cleaned and trimmed and being handled and led with a halter and the owner and I would go for a walk around the property. I was now over a year old and one day this great big truck appeared. It came into the driveway, the humans called it a livestock tender. It rolled into the yard and the owner came and put a halter on me and led me away from my mother. I walked along obediently and I was taken into the back of the truck. I was tied up and the back of the truck closed. It was like I was in a cave. It was dark, there was some light coming through with the high windows. Then the engine started and we were off. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't get to say goodbye to my mummy and friends. I was leaving them all. I was on my own. This is what my mummy tried to tell me about. Oh, I wish I had have listened. I don't know how long it was we stopped a couple of times and picked up other horses. They didn't seem to want to talk. I tried to be friendly. I tried to start a conversation with them. I told them that I was Duke and I was going somewhere. I didn't know where exactly. The truck finally stopped and the door was opened. Oh, I felt all washed out, tired and worried. The driver came and led me out onto the grass. I looked around and realised it was a horse farm. I'm back home. I called out to my mummy and friends. Nobody answered. Well, nobody that I knew. But this wasn't home. It was somewhere else. Somewhere I had never been before. There was new smells, new noises, nothing that was familiar. I kept calling out. I was crying. I knew nobody. 
I started to panic. This lady came up to me and led me with a robe and started to talk to me. She was very calm. I didn't care, so I pulled away from her. You're not my mummy and this place is not my home and I don't want to be here. The truck pulled away and left the property. Now I couldn't go home even if I wanted to. The lady kept persisting and kept talking to me. She led me into a small yard and started to groom me. She offered me some food. It was hay. I couldn't eat. I was too upset. I needed to drink. I was hot and tired. I had a heavy heart of despair. I had so much to deal with. During the day, there was a lot of comings and goings. This property seemed to be alive with activity. I found out the lady's name was Gabby and she kept coming into my yard talking to me. She had a nice voice. On one of her visits, a black dog appeared by her side. Gabby introduced him. His name is Sam. Sam is a black miniature schnauzer. Upon Sam's visit, he showed his natural character. He has a curl in his tail and a cute black face. Duke noticed how Sam was inquisitive, boisterous and energetic. He never seemed to leave Gabby's side. He was her faithful companion. For a moment, I started to think, that dog has a mummy who loves him. How nice that is. Will I find a mummy who will love me? Duke was later to learn wherever there was trouble or mischief, Sam wasn't too far away from the problem. Sam was the self-appointed chief security. He was nosy, obstinate and at times annoying, but above all, loyal. He would lead Duke down the path of mischievous acts, especially with the farmer and his wife, Sheila. They lived next door. After a while, I had a long drink and I started to eat, but there was no enjoyment. Gabby took me for a walk around the stables and was talking to me in a quiet, firm voice. I found this very reassuring. I felt as though I could trust this lady. If only she knew I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to be here, as nice as this property was. At that moment, a bus rolled into the driveway and on the side of the bus, there was disabilities are okay. On board were young people with disabilities. They came for a visit. They heard Gabby was getting a new horse and were eager to meet Duke. Gabby welcomed them. They were regular visitors to the stables. Sam appeared out of nowhere. He was a natural entertainer, bringing his ball for the young people to throw. Sam would retrieve it and bring it back, dancing and strutting around. Duke stood there and hesitated for a moment and then put his nose out. He sensed there was no danger and continued to offer himself for their approval. The young people were happy. They put their hands out on to touch him and to pat him. They laughed and they cried with delight. Duke was a hit. He sensed they had to be treated with care and he had to be careful and gentle. He also sensed they wanted to be treated like everybody else. It wasn't that difficult. He wanted the same, to go home and be loved and wanted. He stayed with them for a while. Gabby brought out some apples, bread and carrots for the visitors to feed Duke. The visit was a success. The young people were in awe with this wonderment, feeling of happiness and laughing. Duke was starting to eat. He enjoyed being the centre of attention. He seemed to be distracted from his present predicament. He started to relax. The afternoon, the afternoon moved on and it was time for them to leave. Gabby was watching and it was like a symphony in action. It was therapeutic. She saw a very gentle Duke interacting with people he didn't know and treating them with respect. Gabby with Duke and Sam standing by said goodbye. 
She waved as their bus departed the driveway. An ambience came over the stables and you could hear the other horses calling out to be fed. It was their feeding time. Gabby said to Duke, well done Duke, you'll be Duke the Wonder Horse. Come on Duke, I'll take you to your stable and I'll make you a special feed just for you. Gabby gave him a kiss and a pat. She was so proud of him. When Duke got his feed that night, he knew it was something nice. He could smell it. The feed had chaff, pellets and some molasses. Oh, yum. There was also some fresh hay. It was all very tasty. Duke ate eagerly. He was very hungry. It had been a long day with a lot of emotion. The sun went down over the property and stables and darkness settled in. There was a full moon that night. The moon ascended with its radiance up into the night sky. Duke was very tired to the point of exhaustion. He settled down on some fresh straw and went to sleep thinking, my new mummy loves me too. I know this because she wants to take care of me. That's the end of the story. Now, I hope you enjoy this book and the books to follow. Now you go and do something that makes your heart sore. Take care, Gabriel Baker.